So let's do, <clears throat> we did f of g of x. Let's compose them in the opposite order. So we're going to look for domain of g of f of x. We already did that. I think we did that for a different function. Oh, okay. We did the same process, flipping them around, but we did that for the last uh, example. All right, so we want to know what is domain g of f of x. So I'll write down the set notation. This is x in. So which function is eating first, f or g? f. So f's first. So I have to first make sure that x is in that domain of f, and then I want to see is f of x in the domain of g. And again, I wrote the first part down because I'm just looking at who's eating first. So f's eating first, so that's the first condition you have to meet. And then the other condition is whatever the output of f is has to be a valid input for g. All right, so now we'll write all these things down. We got the individual domains earlier. So domain f is everything that's not negative 1. And the f of x function itself is 1 over x plus 1. And domain of g. was negative infinity to negative 1 union 1 to infinity. All right, so I just <coughs> wrote down all the actual values for everything in that set. So I'm going to rewrite the first condition right here. What is it? mean to come from those two intervals? Or maybe easier, what does it mean to not come from those intervals? So, so what x value would not be there? Negative. So we'd skip negative 1. So I can rewrite that condition as x is any real number that's not uh, negative 1. So I just rewrote that condition. And now I'm going to look at the other condition right here. Oops, it's a little longer than that. Better zoom out. OK, so what does it mean for 1 over x plus 1? To be inside this interval right here. <coughs> So we think about a number line. We have negative 1 and positive 1. And we have to be outside of those two. So I'm going to turn this into an inequality. So it's either less than or equal to negative 1 or the same expression is greater than or equal to positive 1. So that's a little bit tricky. <coughs> so I looked at the number line and saw that if you're in this, this interval here, you are with negative 1 or smaller, or positive 1 or bigger. So I just rewrote that with uh, inequalities. Now I have a slight order of. Uh, operations to worry about. Not really too big of a deal here. Alright, so negative one's bad. Now I have to deal with these two rational inequalities. Good news is you've done lots of rational inequalities before. So we'll go for, doesn't matter which one we go for first, I'll go for the one on the left first. All right, so this is going to flash back to last chapter, rational inequalities. I think you solved a few web work questions like this, a few homework problems. How do I solve for x? 
So what happens if I, so fractions do suck. Why is this a really bad move? So what would I be assuming if I wrote this line down? Did my inequality sign flip around? So what am I assuming? Multiplied by something that could be negative. It's very easy for that to be negative. So you're assuming that x is going to be 0 or above. So I'm making an assumption, and x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. Well, I'm probably making the assumption it's greater than 0. If it was equal to 0, I'd have undefined on the previous line. All right. What happens if that's negative? Then my inequality sign flips around. So I actually have two things to worry about. All right, so my w single inequality turned into a system of two systems of two inequalities. That sounds pretty bad. So do not, in an inequality, do not multiply by anything with an x in it or any variable in it because very likely it could be negative. And you have to pay attention to when is it positive, when is it negative. So do not multiply by uh, anything with a variable inside of it. All right, so that looks confusing. Let's not go that route. What algebra moves can I make that would never flip my inequality? Adding and subtracting. Ah, let's stick to adding and subtracting. It's a good idea. All right, let's collect everything on one side. Doesn't matter what side. I will collect everything to the left side because it's easier to do that. All right, I don't need to worry about anything being negative and flipping my inequality sign because I did not multiply, I did not divide. So nothing is going to get messed up there. So we, gra we graph these functions and then figure it out when, in this case, when is it below the x-axis. So I'm going to let Oops, I think we're already using f of x, so we'll call it h of x. I could graph this function and then shift it up one, but what I'm going to do instead is add this together with common denominator. Algebra questions on what I did here. So I use addition and subtraction to collect everything on one side, not multiplication, because I have an inequality. All right, graph this function. You got one x intercept, you see it in the numerator, and one vertical asymptote in the denominator. Your end behavior should be pretty clear. So go ahead and graph this out. Shouldn't take too long. And you get a y intercept as well. Questions on intercepts, x or y, and behaviors. This one wasn't too bad. It's a pretty simple function. So let's move all these over, plot them on the graph.
So why would it be very wrong to connect those two points together? Because there's two. What's happening directly in between those points? Vertical asymptote. So there's no point on this graph with an x value of negative 1 because of that vertical asymptote. So I cannot cross that vertical asymptote. So, but um, isn't that a 2? Uh-oh. Yeah. Did I do something wrong? It, well, isn't the... Um, oh, the y-intercept is, uh, yeah, positive 2. There we go. All right, I still can't connect them together. And the reason is I can't cross my vertical asymptote. I can totally cross horizontal asymptotes, but not vertical asymptotes. All right, so do your best to sketch out your graph. So you can either start, probably a good place to start is the far left end for end behavior, and then hit that first x-intercept. It's a good place to start. Okay, questions on the graph. So we did a lot of work just to answer the inequality question. So this was h of x, so I want to know when is h of x less than or equal to zero. So what interval do I use for this inequality now that we know the graph? So it's a pretty small interval, just go from negative 2 to negative 1. And do I go open or closed at the ends? Let's start with the left end. So at negative 2, is negative 2 an OK x value? Why is negative 2 OK? So it's because it's OK to be equal to 0. So our x intercepts, we include those. What about negative 1? Can we use negative 1 as an x value? Nope. So even if it was less than 0 or less than or equal to 0, it doesn't matter. You better not use negative 1. So that's definitely open on that side. All right, so we did our first inequality. <coughs> So our condition turned into x inside the interval, negative 2 to negative 1. So now I want you to take the last inequality, get all four pieces for the graph, graph it up, and tell me when is it positive or negative, depending on how your inequality looks. So I'll name my function j of x, and it's the 1 over x plus 1 minus 1. So I just solve, basically solve for 0. 
And then I want to know when's j of x greater than